glasses seem to be the next place that the tech world wants to inject that prefix smart. And while a few examples of what this can look like have popped up in the last couple of years, most of them are a little more than what I would call recreationally niche products. Sunglasses like the Bose Frames or the Huawei Gentle Monsters work best in situations that you might not find yourself in all the time. But then Amazon wanted to move closer to injecting the smart features into the more everyday scenario with a pair of eyeglasses that whisper assistance into your ears. And I'm here for it, but then again, I'm the kind of person that benefits from glasses first, before adding the prefix. So let's talk about it. This is Paganao and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on everybody? These glasses on my face are the Amazon Echo Frames. To understand why smart glasses are still kind of a weird category, I have to admit something first. I'm nearsighted. Literally speaking, I don't require a very strong prescription in order to see clearly, but it's enough to make me need something on at pretty much all times. For the growing number of smart glasses that are appearing, the vast majority of them are sunglasses, and all of them come without prescriptions. In order to get the life-improving lenses that I need, I had to find a place to replace the lenses in the Echo Frames and pay the extra money for the prescription. It's for that reason that glasses like the Echo Frames come with a rather steep asking price from the people who might benefit from them the most people like me. As someone who wears glasses every day, it makes perfect sense for the temples of the eyewear to have some tech installed. Amazon does this by putting small speakers on the areas that are right above your ears, so that localized audio can effectively blare downward. The drivers for the audio and the batteries that power them make the arms thicker, but that's basically to be expected. At least the glasses are not egregiously large or bulky, adding only a little bit more weight overall, so that any head fatigue that could happen tends to hit me at the end of the day. And yes, these are smart devices, which means there's a cap on how long certain parts of the glasses remain useful. But the smarts are actually a welcome and appreciated extra on top of the most important part. Even if the battery dies, the glasses remain invaluable to my quality of life. After all, they help me see. So what if you're not one of those people? Well, you're being asked to insert some tech into a completely optional part of your life. Smartwatches have steadily grown into a product that can become a necessity in one's everyday life, but those moments when you need a pair of, let's say, sunglasses are fewer and farther in between. And in the case of the Echo Frames, you're asked to wear something solely for the ability to put Amazon's assistant on your face. When the battery dies, what other reason is there to keep these glasses on your face? That particular choice might come down to whether or not you like the look of the Echo Frames. Unfortunately, Amazon's choice to keep things rather conservative might hurt its chances. The Echo Frames are the most accessible smart glasses I've ever used, because they're actually trying to be more like eyeglasses rather than stylish but bulkier alternatives in the sunglass category. There are no other styles other than this glossy black finish and the current shape that is pretty typical for today's eyeglasses. But if you're not already into the look, then Amazon has already missed out on getting Alexa on your face. If you're looking at the many smart glasses that are out right now, the build in these is definitely more friendly to everyday eyeglass wearers. I tend to use Bose frames as daily eyeglasses as well, but Bose frames are thicker and generally less geared towards consistent always-on use. The Echo frames are just a little bit more flexible, definitely far less rigid in its design. Aside from the fact that the arms don't close flush to the lenses, Amazon did a pretty good job of nailing the basics of what everyday eyeglasses should have as far as design is concerned. On the bottom of one of those temples are the charging contacts, which connect to the proprietary cable you'll be using every single night. Which makes sense, because you aren't going to be sleeping with your glasses on, I hope. Charging them up does take a bit, so you have to make it a habit. Nothing is worse than draining out the battery life early in the day, and then having to lose clear eyesight for a while, waiting for them to get some power back. Which actually has happened to me, because the battery life on the Echo Frames is simply decent. I wouldn't expect these to work for a super long amount of time, uh, but for someone like me that likes to have something playing basically all the time, I can definitely burn through the battery life quicker than I would like. Mixed usage with some media, some calling, and some notifications can stretch the battery life, but continuous media use from someone like me drains the battery in under 5 hours. I'm not going to fault Amazon too much for this because they had to make the glasses still fairly sleek and make sure that they weren't so large to accommodate those batteries, but still, it would be nice to be able to use these more often, definitely for continuous use because that's what I do. Okay, so we covered the sense of sight that these glasses can provide after you put down the money to get it. And now we can dive into the main addition, sound. 
It's important to note that these are not meant to be headphone or earbud replacements. You can get some enjoyment from music listening, but you'll still want to reach out for your proper audio products to get immersed and to have the best experience. I even shudder to use typical audio quality terms when evaluating the Echo Frames, but here we go. The low end is what is missing the most, with mid to high frequencies definitely cutting through, especially at the higher volumes. It's particularly for this reason that such higher volumes make noise bleed more obvious to those who aren't far away from you. You obviously don't get any sound isolation because these are about as open as a open design can be, but you also don't get that kind of sound bubble that the Bose frames have achieved. Enough environmental noise can completely drown out everything that you have playing. That said, the mid-range frequencies are done well enough that spoken word and voices are rendered well. So podcasts and audiobooks remain the content highlights when using these, and that's definitely been my main draw. But that's when the point of the Echo Frames actually comes in. After all, you'll be talking to either Alexa by hitting the button or an assistant of your choosing by holding on the touch-sensitive area. You definitely want to dive into the app so you can cater notifications and voice-activated routines to your desired use. As a matter of fact, the Echo Frames has become one of my favorite ways of getting notifications. After you get your list of VIP apps that will get dictated to you, a notification will make you hear a beat and then hear something like Telegram. At that point, a swipe on the side makes the whole notification get read to you. It's subtle enough while giving you the full amount of info needed. Best of all, it's literally just for you because the audio was localized, and it requires less effort than taking out your phone or temporarily losing both of your hands to the act of raising one and using the other to tap on a smartwatch. In all honesty though, I just wish that the rest of the control experience on the Echo Frames was better. Volume is controlled by a rocker next to that power button, while a touch-sensitive area on the right side rounds out the rest of the controls. While using the Alexa app to route notifications to the Echo Frames, you can dismiss notifications with a tap or listen to them with a swipe. The problem is that this touch area is somehow both overly sensitive and then sometimes unresponsive. There are times when I'm walking out and about and the frames just beep to read my notifications even though I never even did anything. And on the other hand, double tapping the area to play and pause my media often takes multiple attempts of triple taps until it works. Personally, I would have preferred volume control to be done via the touch sensitive area and then the rest of the functions to be done with more reliable buttons. With all of their ups and downs, the Echo Frames have become one of my go-to pairs of everyday eyeglasses. The style works well enough for me, and I definitely want to use the investment that I made in putting prescription lenses in. The tech additions aren't perfect, but the sum of the Echo Frames parts make for a great example of what smart glasses can actually look like when they're put in a product that isn't just recreationally niche. And of course, if I have a need for a better audio experience, my ears are open to the headphones and earbuds that I would put in them anyway. It's really the incidental moments of sound that glasses like these prove very useful for. Those moments when you can't be bothered to take your phone out, but you still need to hear the message that came in. The times when you want to watch a TikTok, but you're in public. You don't need to bother anyone anymore because the video and its audio are literally personal to you. Phone and video calls are easier when you can pick up the call and talk through the microphones that have been sitting on your face all along. Speaking of which, people I've spoken to said on calls that the sound was really good, even better than truly wireless earbuds. It's probably because the microphone array is in a better position than way back here in your ear. And perhaps best of all for me, the Echo Frames give me access to the kinds of background tunes and even distractions that I want when I want them. For someone like me, making audio more easily accessible is a step toward doing the same for many other aspects of my connected life. It's just a shame that for people like me that these kinds of products can benefit the most, we often have to pay the most. For the rest of you out there, let's say with clear eyesight, it comes down to how much you actually want to have just decent audio or surprisingly useful Alexa functionality and notifications always at the ready, provided you haven't already drained the battery. If anything, the Echo Frames is the latest example of how the term wearable is ever expanding, and it gives us a clearer picture of how this category can continue to grow. For more perspectives on tech, including wearables like the Echo Frames and beyond, make sure you subscribe to Pocket Now's YouTube channel. Drop some likes on this video and let me know what you think of these Echo Frames in the comment sections down below. With all of that said, we're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you in our next video.